So, um, <coughs> first stage KeyCAD um, is library management. Um, it's something that I've neglected um, to really do, so I'm doing it now. Um, and what I'll do is um, I'll stick it all on a pen drive and then hopefully I can share it easy enough with anyone who wants it and I'll put the files online um, so you can use my libraries. Okay, let's launch KeyCAD to start with and I'm just going to... Right, okay, I'm now on my laptop and you can see OBS window open right. I have my library on my pen drive, um, about 16 gigs worth of stuff on there. So I'll probably pause this while it actually downloads if it's going to take a while. Um, so let's find where the keycad standard folders are because this is the bit I messed up when I first installed it. I had no idea where anything was really meant to be going. Um, so let's open keycad and see where it's saving things. Uh, so let's go new project um, documents. Let's make a new folder called keycad um, and I pinned quick access because I use that a lot keycad new folder projects and let's make a new folder called library okay Let's just open a brand new project, keycard projects. File name, uh, okay. Keycard has been run for the first time using two symbol library table for accessing libraries. All the keycards plus complete a global library table. So, I'm going to, I'm not going to do that, I'm going to create an empty one. because I already have one so what I'll do then is download these libraries into my new folder which I'll probably make a shortcut for on the desktop Keycard library. See how long that's going to take. 16 gig time remaining. 55 minutes at the moment. So I'm going to pause this video and come back when that's done. Okay. So I'm back and all my files are now. Um, in the keycad library folder that we created so next stage is open keycad up and try and find them um, so go back into a schema which is the schematic capture um, manage symbol libraries and there's nothing loaded yet so add existing library to table um, navigate back and I think I can just highlight all of them and open. I don't know if it got the ones that are in the folders there. <coughs> Let's have a look. Which ones in the folder? Graphic, USB interface, are those in here? It doesn't look like those ones um, were loaded, so what I'm going to do is just bin everything for now. Um, and I'm going to put all these 
into the main folder. and then highlight everything and now it should have loaded all of them graphic cool yep yeah, it's loaded all of them so that should be fine okay uh, just a little um, thing there, you want to make sure that you put these in global libraries so then you can use them in every project rather than project specific libraries. If you want really specific parts um, that you just want for a specific project you could load them in there. Um, I tend to just prefer everything available for all projects all the time. Um, right, that should be loaded so now we can um, drop in our parts um, and this has all my libraries now that I used before all my custom made parts um, which makes me happy that I don't have to redo all that work um, I don't know whether they still will be uh, tied there go. Arduinos, ah oh, look at that, that is pretty damn useful, there we go um, what I don't know is if they're still tied to their footprints and if the footprints are then still tied to the 3D models. Um, it would be great if they are, I think that's wishful thinking. Um, and unfortunately that's quite a bit of work, but you can kind of do that as you go, as and when you need it. Um, trying to think what a good one to start with would be electrolytic capacitors. So these are almost certainly tied to a physical model. so does appear at the very least okay that view is slightly different than I'm used to I um, wonder if I've got the latest version of keycard on my old PC so PCB new um, however it is useful to tie it to the part you'll most commonly use with that because it will auto select that so it saves a lot of time when you're going back through it later so I know the caps I tend to use um, the 470U farad ones, microfarad ones, tend to use this footprint um, and if I go edit you can select here but I've not set it up so that's fine uh, cancel, uh, I don't want to do that create an empty one, footprint library not found yet okay that's fine um, so maybe some of them might last, but otherwise I'll probably have to go through at some point as and when I use them and reassign them. So that's pretty useless, but oh well. Um, so let's discard that. Let's go into PCB new and um, see if acceleration works. Let's just see if I can assign those libraries, because if I can that will probably save us some time later. So manage footprint libraries and see this one shows up a little bit differently. So footprints okay so completely different shortcuts on their add on um, a schema, the scapship cap schematic capture um, adds components on here. I don't know what the shortcut is, but you can add, uh, you can press add footprints there, <coughs> and it'll give you a list of all the components you've got loaded. Here we go. So, a lot of these I've never used before. Um, connectors, banana jacks. measurements this could be quite useful um, so somewhere I've got modules module are the ones I loaded modules are the, my old ones I've created um, somewhere enclosures possibly enclosures 
Arduino. Here we go. These are my outlines for Arduino boards. Um, they don't actually contain any parts in a, in of themselves. They are just a graphic outline apart from these, which are drill holes. Um, the rest of it is just the is just um, front silk screen. So this is just a silk screen layer. Um, so if I actually want a board this shape, what I can do is uh, you go to graphics line, add graphic line, and you select edge cuts, which at the moment is yellow. You can change these colours for um, anything you want, by the way. I tend to like uh, my front kind of um, orange, which is what I'm used to. Right, oh, there we go. So you can draw graphics lines, but if I choose edge cuts in yellow, what I can do is so one thing you'll notice quite soon um, is the grid. Um, the grid tends to also set to 50, and a lot of things probably won't line up on the 50 grid. Um, many parts are actually on a 25 grid, um, so sometimes it's easier just to set things to 25, um, and then you can. Trace over. I can uh, set curves on the corner later, but I just want to see. I don't think I did a 3D print for this, uh, a 3D um, model for this, but let's just have a look what the 3D viewer gives us. So. That's just the outline I've drawn um, with the silk screen on it. So that doesn't have any models associated with it. Let's see if I add something. So you can add as many parts as you want without even using the schematic. If you've got quite a simple board, you could go straight to this stage. Got much better descriptions in these now than I had before. <laughs> these didn't have any descriptions before. So that's good. I'll see if it's updated on um, when I go back to my other PC because the screen's better um, to actually do a schematic capture and a PCB from start to finish. We'll um, see how that looks. So if I just drop a capacitor down there, now can I add? There we go. So you can just draw traces in without them being associated with anything, but of course. Um, you could then do really stupid things like that um, and short out components, so let's not do that. Now let's just see. Oh, look at that. It has associated it with the correct 3D part. Brilliant. That makes me so happy because that takes ages. I'm sure at some point I'll get around to uh, showing you how to do that. But that is a relief that that is done for me because that's it takes it takes quite a long time for each part so that is good news I'm happy about that um, so I'm gonna close this discard changes um, and I'm gonna close this down um, great um, I'm gonna go back to my other PC and we'll do an actual schematic capture so thank you very much see you in the next episode